Welcome to the virtual open house for the Bruce Vento, Vento Regional Trail Extension from Whitaker Street to County Road J. We really appreciate you taking time out of your days to join us for this virtual meeting. Um, during the virtual open house, we have representatives on the call from Ramsey County Parks and Recreation Department, the City of White Bear Lake, White Bear Township, the White Bear Lake Area School District, and members of the SRF consultant team. Before beginning the presentation, I wanted to take just a few minutes to provide a little bit of orientation and background for uh, how to use tools available during our virtual meeting. During the presentation, attendees will be on mute and have their cameras disabled. The chat function has been disabled as well, and we encourage attendees to use the Q&A box, an option on the bottom of your screen, to type any comments or questions that you have during the presentation. Um, following the presentation, we will open it up for a public question and answer session where you, um, we will read any questions that have been typed into that Q&A box. You also have the option to raise your hand, an option you can see on the bottom of your screen to indicate that you'd like to be acknowledged um, for up to two minutes of open mic where we'll allow you to share any comments or questions that you may have. I would also note, um, you may be familiar with Zoom or virtual meeting formats, but please bear with us if any technical difficulties arise. And before beginning the presentation, just a few more notes about how to use that Q&A box and the tools available to engage with us this evening. Um, you'll have the option to type in your comments. Um, if you would like to be acknowledged for that open mic, that raise hand option on the bottom of your screen will let us know that you'd like to be acknowledged. And then, um, if there is anyone joining us via the phone this evening, you have the option to hit star nine to raise your hand and star six to unmute yourself when the appropriate time comes. We will circle back to these instructions at the end of the presentation, but now I will turn it over to Scott Yonke from Ramsey County Parks and Recreation to begin the presentation. Hi everyone, my name is Scott Yonke. I'm the Planning and, and Development Director with Ramsey County Parks. Thank you for everyone attending the, the open house presentation tonight. We're gonna to be talking about the phase two design project for the Bruce Vento Regional Trail. The, the Bruce Vento Regional Trail is considered, is, is an important community asset uh, local, locally, additionally regionally, since it is a regional trail. Um, overall, the, the regional trail corridor for Bruce Vento is 13.3 miles in length. It starts in downtown St. Paul and it goes all the way up to the northern Ramsey County border at County Road J. Next slide, please. Um, as you can see right here, I'm just going to give you a little bit of an overview. So what we're talking about tonight is the phase two uh, extension for the Bruce Vento Trail. The phase one was, um, we're almost uh, in completion of final design plans on that one. And that one is from Berkeley Road up to the intersection of Hoffman and White Bear Avenue. So as far as the phase two is 3.5 miles in length. It extends north from Whitaker Street up to County Road J. And phase two does plan to connect into the phase one portion. The new trail project will uh, provide uh, many benefits to the community uh, regionally and locally uh, for businesses, adjacent neighborhoods, as well as drawing new audiences to the regional trail system. Thank you. Um, I'd like to just give a, a brief project history. So the, the Bruce Vento Master Plan was originally uh, completed in 1993, and that really guided the whole regional trail corridor uh, from downtown St. Paul up to County Road J. Uh, in 2018, Ramsey County initiated three uh, projects. Uh, the phase one trail design project, which I mentioned earlier, and that extends from Berkeley Road up to the Hoffman Road and uh, intersection of um, Highway 61. And that project was really to determine how the trail corridor would be located in that area, as well as come up with design scenarios and completing final design plans. Additionally, uh, the county looked at uh, 
establishing or launching a feasibility study. And this was mainly north of Highway 96 to really determine where does that regional trail corridor go through the city of White Bear Lake and White Bear Township. There was a number of um, design meetings that were held at that time. And we looked at a number of design scenarios. Uh, and then ultimately we were able to come down to a preferred alignment on that one. And then lastly, we also launched a master plan amendment. Uh, and that really covered the whole trail corridor within Ramsey County from Larkbinter Avenue all the way up to County Road J. And mainly what that considered, it, it included uh, uh, an integrated rush line BRT design components, uh, long-term uh, infrastructure redevelopment, as well as um, integrating the new trail alignments for the Bruce Fentel Trail north of Berkeley Road. In 2020, um, after the feasibility study was completed, there was uh, a preferred trail uh, alignment for the phase two portion, basically from Whitaker Street all the way up to County Road J. I'll just touch on that a moment. So that process really started back in 2017 where we started to identify a number of corridors. There were two meetings that were held in 2018 to uh, start a community engagement process and really take a look at what, what do those corridors mean to, to the community and where should that Bruce Ventil Trail uh, really be located. As part of the outcome of those first two meetings, we really took a step back and we looked at several other locations, including the downtown location, to see if the trail really could be located within the downtown. And after a year long study, it was ultimately determined the trail could not be located within the original corridor uh, where the railway alignment is. In 2020, uh, Ramsey County, we uh, started a draft master plan amendment for the long-term improvements on the Bruce Mental Trail. And that really was the second step of that feasibility study to determine those long-term improvements as well as integrating that preferred alignment that was selected in 2019 uh, within the master plan. November, 2020, the RFP for our phase two design was released. January, 2021, we began the phase two pre-design with SRF. Uh, May 2021, the draft amendment was approved by the Ramsey County Board of Commissioners and then was submitted to the Metropolitan Council shortly afterwards in May. And then currently right now, the Bruce Fentel Mail Trail Master Plan uh, should be reviewed and approved within the Met Council cycle within August of this year. Next slide, please. Some of the project goals that we really want to achieve with this project. One, we want to provide trail connections for the Rushline BRT project, downtown White Bear Lake and within White Bear Townships. And additionally, we also want to provide uh, connections to other trail systems, uh, either local trail systems or regional trail systems. We want to prepare uh, final design construction plans and ultimately, we're, our main goal is to move this forward so we can prepare and be ready for future grant requests. We want to conduct community engagement to gather improvement on regional trail improvements. We also want to design a high quality space for all people, all ages, and all abilities. And then the regional trail facility amenities and site components that we would like to incorporate into the project, we really want to make sure that they are sustainable and we're looking at green infrastructure for long-term resiliency. Next slide. From here, I'm gonna transition the project, uh, the discussion over to Mike McGarry to really talk about the project elements and project components. Thanks, Scott. Um, so as was mentioned, uh, the, the Bruce Vento corridor uh, phase two extends from Whitaker Road at the south all the way up to County Road J. Um, and the corridor can be further broken down into uh, three distinct segments uh, with different characteristics. The first being the segment from Whitaker up to Bald Eagle Boulevard along Bald Eagle Avenue. Uh, the second segment being that piece along 
uh, segment of the trail along Bald Eagle Boulevard and Taylor Avenue. And the third segment being that segment along Hugo Road uh, north to County Road J and connecting to the Hardwood Trail in Washington County, Hardwood Creek Trail. At the south end, um, that first segment along Bald Eagle Avenue, uh, the trail is intended to be located along the east side of the, the roadway. Uh, in this stretch of uh, the corridor, uh, for a good chunk of the southern end of it, uh, there is an existing trail that is there that will be widened to uh, meet accepted state, regional, uh, national standards uh, to allow the project to be eligible for as many funding sources as, as, as possible. Um, so looking at widening the existing trail or sidewalk on the east side of uh, Bald Eagle Avenue <clears throat> to a nominal uh, 10 foot width and continuing that up uh, past the, the middle school and the high school up to Bald Eagle Boulevard. Along Bald Eagle Boulevard and Bald Eagle Lake, um, there's a couple of options that are being explored for that segment. Uh, the first, uh, and as Scott mentioned, the intent is to, uh, per the master plan and per the preferred alignment, to, to make use of Bald Eagle Boulevard and Taylor Avenue. Um, and the, the idea there is that we will pursue one of two options uh, that we're exploring. One would be able to maintain two-way traffic uh, through those segments of roadways and build the trail adjacent to the roadway. Um, and, and then the other alternative would be converting some or all of Bald Eagle Boulevard to a one-way uh, operation to allow for the trail to be built within uh, the existing roadway section or largely within the existing roadway section. Um, based on site constraints and looking to minimize impacts to adjacent properties. The third segment uh, would be that segment along Hugo uh, Road. And this segment, um, there's two subsets to this uh, south of the park. Uh, this is another area where we have constrained right away, in this case, uh, adjacent properties as well as the adjacent railroad. Um, and so in this area, what we are looking at is a likely a hybrid scenario where we have some sort of on-road facility for the bicycles uh, and then a, a narrow uh, walking path for pedestrians. And then once we get north of the park, there's the opportunity for the trail to divert uh, and make use of existing trails in the, in the park, uh, an existing county right of way or property uh, to provide for an independent trail uh, north of the park. We'll say that the alternate alignment that you see there in blue, uh, that is kind of a fallback position if we cannot make uh, a trail work along Bald Eagle Boulevard and Taylor Avenue. Um, but to date, our analysis has indicated that uh, we feel comfortable we, we are moving forward with that. Um, but we do have that fallback position of an alternate route that would go uh, through the White Bear Lake High School property uh, along Division Street and Park Avenue to Hugo Road um, as a fallback position. Having said that, um, we have looked uh, done quite a bit of analysis already on the Hugo or the Bald Eagle Boulevard segment, looking at that idea of uh, two-way and one-way operations. And we have uh, done some traffic analysis to look at uh, where traffic might be diverted if, if Bald Eagle Boulevard is converted to one way and feel comfortable that the, the impacts to the adjacent neighborhood are, are relatively minor in terms of diverting traffic um, even when we consider uh, future growth of the White Bear Lake High School site uh, and the work that's happening there uh, as planned for uh, improvements at that site. Next slide. So as I mentioned, the segment along Bald Eagle Avenue. Um, so can we go back to the, the previous slide, Dan, quick? Um, two other things I wanna make note of um, that both occur in the White Bear or the Bald Eagle Avenue segment, um, we do have two major uh, crossings that we need to address. 
Uh, the first of those is at Highway 96 at the very south end of the project. Um, and so there we are evaluating a number of different crossing alternatives, including both at grade, uh, a trail that would occur on the across the, the roadway at, at grade, uh, as well as grade separated alternatives and, and what the opportunities uh, are for pursuing that sort of crossing at that complicated and busy intersection. The second thing that we need to consider is the crossing of the uh, Canadian Pacific Railroad uh, towards the north end of Bald Eagle Avenue. Um, and so we have initiated conversations with the railroad uh, regarding that activity. Uh, but those are two important considerations as we continue to move forward. Next slide. So again, along Bald Eagle Avenue, uh, the intent is that the trail would be along the east side of the roadway. Um, as I mentioned, for a significant portion of the corridor, there is an existing walk or trail in that location. And so we want to make use of, of that uh, existing infrastructure um, and either widen or replace that uh, to meet current design standards, both state and federal, again, to uh, provide the opportunity for as many funding sources as possible. The idea would be that that would in typically be given the right of way available, uh, would be a, a 10 foot walk at the back of the curb with a narrow uh, concrete boulevard or paved boulevard uh, adjacent the curb. Uh, in this area, there's a number of things to consider uh, as we move forward. There's the, the businesses that and schools at the south end and making sure that we are uh, maintaining uh, safe view sheds, uh, sight lines as we move along that stretch of roadway. Um, various local road crossings that we will want to make sure that we have accessible uh, ramps at all those crossings. And there will be some uh, utility relocations that would be required to, to accommodate the trail in that location. Uh, and so that's something that will need to be uh, continue to be evaluated as well. The next segment as we get to Bald Eagle Boulevard, as I mentioned, there's two options that we are uh, currently evaluating for the trail along Bald Eagle Boulevard. One, as is shown here, uh, suggests that we do make use of the existing uh, roadway. And so right now there are two 11 foot lanes. Uh, this is suggesting the trail on the house side of the, the roadway, uh, that that portion of the roadway would be converted to trail use. And in an effort to minimize impacts to adjacent properties and and reduce the impact of uh, the overall footprint of the, the facility. Uh, we have looked at uh, operations uh, and traffic, as I mentioned, and the suggested uh, suggestion is at this point that looking at likely a, a scenario where the uh, direction of traffic is northbound one way uh, versus southbound to accommodate um, trash collection, mail delivery, things of that sort. Um, we did have a number of comments uh, this morning about which side of the roadway the trail would be on, uh, whether the trail would be on the lake side or the house side. Uh, we are currently showing it on the house side, uh, but I think still some discussion about, um, based on some comments today about where the best place is for putting the trail. And, um, so continuing to look at that, but this is one where the, the trail and the roadway share essentially the existing footprint of the roadway. Next one. The second alternative looks at uh, maintaining the, the full width of the roadway and adding the trail. Um, and in this case uh, as well, we are suggesting the trail potentially on the um, house side of the roadway. Um, and so again, here we've got the existing 22 foot roadway um, and then adding the trail component to that. Um, so maintaining it, current traffic operations, adding the trail. Uh, this obviously will have some more impact on uh, adjacent properties, may require some retaining walls to accommodate that. Um, and we are continuing to evaluate both these alternatives. And, and a big uh, part of the meeting today is just to get input on uh, from the public here as to what uh, what the preference is between these two alternatives. Lastly, the Hugo Road segment. 
Uh, this is one where I mentioned uh, we're looking at uh, constraints with right away uh, in adjacent wetlands, as well as utilities, as you can see in the image here. Um, and we are evalu continue to evaluate alternatives here, uh, as I mentioned earlier, looking at uh, likely something that is some sort of hybrid approach uh, that may include on-road bicycle facilities, as well as an adjacent uh, pedestrian facility that may be uh, an extension of the road or a, a small sidewalk segment. Next slide. So as Scott mentioned before in the timeline, uh, SRF was brought on board uh, at the start of the year to uh, further develop the alternative alignment and the preferred alignment that was identified in the master plan amendment, uh, bringing that to a 20 to 30 percent complete uh, state that would allow it to be um, better positioned for funding opportunities through the state and federal grant opportunities. Uh, so that is our charge working with the, the preferred uh, alignment that's been identified in the feasibility study in the master plan. Uh, as we are doing today, we are continuing to do a community engagement and seek input on those designs uh, as they are being refined with the idea that we are gonna complete this, this effort by the end of 2021 uh, and at such point that um, the project can be put forward for uh, future funding opportunities, both at the state and federal level uh, to further uh, the design work and implementation of the trail. And then I'll turn it back to Dan. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Just to highlight a few um, additional details on community engagement and opportunities to share your input. Um, there are two more rounds of engagement planned here in 2021. Later this summer, uh, we'll look to come back out to the community with some meetings and um, some targeted outreach in order to share those potential trail alignment design concepts. And then in the fall, come back out to the public again for another round of meetings and engagement to, to show that, that preferred trail alignment based off of, of input and evaluation with project partners. Um, currently available on the project website is a, a, a wiki map. This is a way to provide um, geographic comments, looking to uh, better understand how community members may um, enter or use the trail, what, what community destinations would be helpful to be able to access or um, to utilize via the extension of the Bruce Vento Regional Trail. Um, and then areas of opportunity or concern as well as kind of mapping out or showing the route that you would take along the trail or, or to access and enter the trail. So I'll add uh, the link to this wiki map in the chat. Would encourage anyone who is on the call tonight to, to share their thoughts via the wiki map and to help us spread the word and share this, um, this input tool with coworkers, friends, uh, neighbors, others who may be interested in the project. I will also add a link to the project website where you can find um, more information about the history of the planning of the extension, the current project, the plans for the future and schedule. Uh, it's that link there that I just shared in the chat is a good way to stay involved and up to date with things to come. We have received a few questions in the Q&A box that we can look to respond to. Before jumping into our open question and answer session, I did want to just provide a little bit of a brief orientation once again of how you can interact with us this evening. Um, that Q&A box should be an option available on the bottom of your screen. You can type your questions or your comments in there. We'll read them in the order received. Um, we also kind of look to juggle between those typed comments that I'll read out and share with the audience. Um, if you would like to, you can raise your hand to indicate that you'd like to talk or share your thoughts and comments with us up for up to two minutes. If, um, if anyone is interested, I'll look for those raised hands and just ask that you be respectful um, during that open mic time. But to kick things off, I'll, I'll take the questions that were received during the presentation and um, we'll start our question and answer session. First question received was asking, has funding come through for phase one for north of Berkeley Road? Um, and is there a planned start date for that extension? Scott, I'm not sure if you wanna take that, that initial question there. Yes, Dan, uh, great question, Craig. And so the 
funding for the design um, has been um, completed or have, have we, we've received that portion. Uh, funding for the construction or the implementation of the trail has not been received yet. So we're still looking at uh, available funding sources for that. So that will be more or less our first priority to, uh, being that we're almost completed with final design and construction plans on that, uh, that phase. So we're gonna be looking at trying to get that one constructed. So looking forward for additional funding opportunities for that and then the phase two. Uh, you know, we're going to be going into the 20 to or 20 percent design. So we'll be looking at securing funding to complete design on that and then implementate or funding for implementation after that. Um, I can also answer the second uh, question as well. The question reads out what can be done to deal with the huge cracks in the asphalt south of County Road D, especially south of Cope. Great question. So that is a section of the, the Bruce Mental Trail um, that is identified within the Rush Line Corridor. Um, we do uh, look at um, um, implementing our maintenance practices. Uh, so we, we do, uh, do seal coats and crack seals on this. So we are constantly looking at these areas. We have a pavement maintenance program that we identified these, but there's also some areas that do pop up that we're not aware of. But more specifically in this section, we'll, we'll, we'll be looking at doing some of the, some maintenance to make sure the trail is safe and, and comfortable for use. But this is a section of the Bruce Mental Trail that will be um, uh, reconstructed as part of the Rush Line Corridor uh, project. So after that project is, is fully completed, you will have a brand new trail section within uh, that section um, south of County Road D. Appreciate you taking those questions there, Scott. We had one other comment come in in the Q&A, and I'll, I'll read this aloud as well and see if Mike or others would like to respond. Sure. Don't understand why the trail would be on the house side along East Bald Eagle. Walkers and bikers want to connect with the lake, which is driving the pedestrian and bicycle demand. It was mentioned that vehicles on the lakeside would reduce impacts. This needs to be explained since the footprint is the same for either approach. Keeping vehicles on the house side matches what exists today and would not intrude and introduce new impacts to homeowners, would actually reduce impacts given traffic volumes would be cut in half. Sure, thanks, Dan. So I think, as I mentioned in the presentation, uh, there were some similar comments made this morning uh, at the earlier presentation. And I think that's something we're, we're looking at. When we looked at uh, initially looking at the, uh, which side to locate the trail, uh, really looking at, at the need to uh, reconstruct, minimize reconstruction of the existing roadway. And in doing that, um, it would appear that that uh, constructing the trail on the house side would have uh, less impacts. Uh, however, I do understand your concern and, and your interest in having uh, walkers and bikers connecting with the lake. And I think there, if we look at this a little bit further, I think there's opportunities to make that approach work. Um, and there are some other reasons maybe that we want to give that some more consideration. So uh, definitely noted. And, uh, and as I said, that question is still a little bit open-ended uh, and we'll continue to look at it and appreciate the comment. Thanks, Mike. Um, we did receive one other question. Before we jump into that, I would just welcome those who joined recently. Um, looks like an individual joined via phone and you would also have the opportunity to participate with us during this question and answer session. Um, the meetings are being recorded and will be available on the project website afterwards. But um, after taking this next question in the Q&A, if anyone would like to go ahead and raise your hand to share a verbal comment, that is an option. If you're calling in, you would hit star nine on your phone to indicate that you'd like to be acknowledged for um, up to two minutes of open mic. The next question received uh, was, there is a need for current road work on the east side of Bald Eagle Lake. How does that current need tie into the potential bike trail? Mike or others want to take a response to this? Um, I'll take a, a just a technical uh, 
approach to it, but maybe Tom or Scott can respond for the, the either the township or the county uh, in terms of where that project or where that roadway fits into the current reconstruction cycles. Um, I think certainly there is uh, the opportunity to, to tie things together. Uh, assuming you're talking about the east side of Baldy Lake along Hugo Road, um, I do know that there does seem to be uh, portions of that pavement that are in poor condition. And um, so there does seem to be an opportunity to kind of tie these things together, particularly if we're talking about um, you know, some sort of hybrid situation where um, we would be making use of the roadway uh, for the trail facility. Um, what exactly that looks like at this point, uh, we're still not quite there, um, but I think it's certainly something that um, that makes sense to to try and kill two birds with one stone if the, the opportunity presents itself. Thanks, Mike. Um, Scott or Tom, any follow up to that response from Mike? Uh, this is Scott Yonke with Ramsey County. Uh, I don't have too much to add to that. I think Mike did a pretty good explanation of that. So part of this project, you know, yes, we're looking at uh, where, where and how does that trail corridor fit within that uh, roadway corridor, but as part of this, uh, there will be some other opportunities that, that may came, that might come up, as well as um, also indicating where there's areas for potential or future road work uh, in, in the future. And at that point, I think as part of an overall design approach, uh, we would look to see how that could um, how that may relate to each other. We would also work with our Ramsey County Public Works in regards to, uh, to see how or when that, that might be integrated uh, and depending on the location that it's at. So um, I think we're gonna learn more as the project goes uh, to, to find out uh, really what we're looking at in the, in the corridor and then as well as the trail. Um, implementation through there and how it will fit with the road and any other future roadway improvements. Thanks, Scott. Tom, looks like you might want to follow up as well. might ask that you provide us a brief introduction as well. Hi, uh, Tom Redesso. I'm the township planner. And uh, relative to the roads, uh, East West Bald Eagle, Bald Eagle Avenue, uh, Park, Hugo Road, these are all under county jurisdiction and part of the county's public works uh, uh, main maintenance and construction. Thanks, Tom. That, um, that has cleared the questions that we had uh, received through the Q&A box. We still have time here available this evening if there are other questions or comments that anyone on the line would like to share. I think we'll pause just a moment to see if any hands are raised or other comments or questions come in through the Q&A box. Not immediately seeing those questions. Again, we'll wait just a moment, but wanted to make sure everyone has a chance to review and see the, the contact information and the project website in order to stay involved and to follow up with any additional comments, questions, or ideas. Um, we did receive an additional comment. Looks like it's related to the, the Rush Line BRT, asking for a start time for that bus rapid transit line. I assume that is in reference to the rush line bus rapid transit. Scott, would, would you be the best person to take a, an initial response to that or? Um, Scott Yonke with Ramsey County. Um, I guess what I can, I think that might be, uh, I'd like to follow up with our public works department and our regional rail staff to, to really get a better answer in regards to when the, the start time of that, I know we're still maneuvering through design as a county, It's going and there's many components to that. So I'd really like to follow up to see exactly where they are at in the time frame, and then we could provide some additional information uh, regarding that. Sounds good, appreciate that. And appreciate the clarification from Craig there confirming the construction of the BRT. Um, 
Another question has just, or comment has come in. I would say it looks like someone has joined us, so welcome. We're just um, going through an open question and answer session after walking through a brief presentation related to the Bruce Vento Regional Trail Extension. This meeting is being recorded and the full presentation will be up on the project website afterwards, but um, thank you for joining us. I would encourage you to feel free to follow up with any questions or comments. The next question received here, um, noting appreciate the comment here um noting the benefit with traffic staying on the house side is avoiding vehicles to and from side streets and driveways having that cross over the trail um wanting to avoid cars and trails interacting not sure yep. it looks like mike want to respond to that as well sure i and that was one of the comments that came up this morning um and um good point and something that we'll continue to look at yeah appreciate that comment there Again, we'll, we'll just take a brief pause here uh, as we're coming up on the six o'clock hour to see if there are other um, questions or ways that you'd like to interact with us this evening. I would just reiterate, we really do appreciate everyone taking time out of their days to join the conversation and um, participate in the Bruce Vento Regional Trail Extension Virtual Open House. Uh, I don't see any additional comments coming in. Maybe I'll turn it back over to Scott for some closing remarks. Uh, thanks, Dan. Uh, Scott Yonke with Ramsey County Parks again. Uh, I really do appreciate everyone's time uh, this evening to uh, um, sit through our presentation for the phase two Bruce Vento Regional Trail uh, design project. Um, and again, uh, as, as we have mentioned through the project, you know, we're really at the beginning stage of this project right now. We're gonna be learning more information. There's gonna be more design uh, components uh, as it goes along. Additionally, there's gonna be uh, more engagement through this. So I, I appreciate your, your time. There is a lot of information that is located on our project website. There is a link that's shown on the screen right now. So uh, please go there uh, and you'll have access to the wiki map as well as to the um, presentations that were held earlier today and this one right now, as well as there's a lot of other information regarding the Bruce Mental Trail project that have taken place over the last several years in, in regards to the phase one design. Um, portion, the master plan amendment, as well as the feasibility study process. So it's a good place to go. Thank you, everyone. Um, and Dan, it looks like we might have maybe one more question that might have popped up. Yeah, I did have just a few more comments come in there. Um, one question was asking if there were other questions raised this morning, not addressing this session. One question that did come up this morning and was just asked is, is what does the project cost? And I think um, Scott would be the best person to, to respond to that as well. And I guess I maybe feel, for, I'll, I'll interject here briefly just to say, feel free to clarify, but I think we will respond to the project cost for this phase of the Bruce Vento Regional Trail Extension. Uh, again, Scott Yankee, Ramsey County, uh, great question. So the this project as we're referring to right now for the phase two design project. So this is only gonna get us to about 20% uh, preliminary design. We budgeted about $200,000 for, for this project. Scott, a, a follow-up to that was um, any, any details to share on, on, on the source of that funding? Uh, so the, the source of the funding that we're using for this project uh, uh, is being provided through the, uh, the Minnesota Parks and Trails Legacy Amendment Fund. So that's been a great funding source for us. And that's what is being provided for the, the, the phase two design project. It was also the same funding that we were utilizing for the, the phase one design project. As we look further into the phase two, after this project is completed, we still need to complete uh, final design. Those funds have, have, uh, have not been determined yet or where they're coming from or what the cost is on that. Um, as we're looking for maybe down the road in the future regarding the phase one construction or the construction portion from phase two, 
Um, funding yet has not been determined for those two phases. Uh, we'd be liking, we'd be more than likely seeking uh, a federal funding source for those those two uh, construction projects. So there's going to be a little bit more information, and this project will lead us into. Um, will give us more information and make us available for many more funding opportunities. Appreciate that. And I can respond to a few of the other comments or questions that came in here. Um, one was asking if there were other questions raised this morning, not in this session or outside of this. The, the project did host a pop-up at Market Fest and just had um, an opportunity to introduce this phase to extension to a, a wide range of audiences. Um, and then, um, there was some questions this morning regarding a little bit more of the history um, of the selection of a preferred alternative. That meeting and this meeting will both are, have both been recorded and will be posted on the project website. The link was just shared in the chat. It may take us a couple of days to get that, that link available, but you will be able to find both meetings um, recorded in their full on the project website here in the next few days. So we'd encourage you to um, to continue to check the website if you're interested in learning more about the discussion during these virtual open houses or to stay involved on next steps. And it looks like that has taken us up to the questions that we have received to date. Um, again, we have just a few minutes before the six o'clock hour. If there are any remaining questions or comments you would like to ask. I can jump back. It looks like another question is related to timeline. Um, working towards that 20% design, uh, pre-design, we will be um, working here in 2021 to complete that pre-design by the end of the year. There's a brief summary of the timeline for this part of the phase two extension. Additionally, I will just highlight again that will include two more rounds of community engagement later this summer and in the fall of 2021. And then it looks like a follow up question that I will look to direct to Scott. Will the project be done? I would assume be led um, or completed by the Met Council or by Ramsey County. Uh, Scott Yonke with Ramsey County Parks. Uh, great question. So the Bruce Venter Regional Trail, uh, that is owned and operated by Ramsey County. So uh, design is, is, is uh, led by Ramsey County as well as when the project will eventually go into uh, construction, and this would be for the phase one or the phase two portion, will also be led by Ramsey County. Appreciate that helpful reply there, Scott. Um, once again, we'll just pause for a moment to see if other questions come in. Otherwise, we will look to, um, to wrap up this evening's meeting. Dan, could you maybe move to the end so people could see? Great. I, I... Uh, that way people have an opportunity to find out where if they need to submit additional questions if they have to. Absolutely, yeah, thanks Scott. Um, one other question coming in here, maybe I'll, I'll pass this one to Mike initially is, is regarding trees. Is there any knowledge or understanding of how many trees will be displaced as part of the project? Not at this time, we are, uh in the midst of uh, refining the design and specifically looking at uh, more detailed analysis of the impacts, uh, including impacts to adjacent uh, trees, particularly along uh, Bald Eagle Boulevard, but um, there is potential for um, tree impacts along uh, Hugo Road and uh, Bald Eagle Avenue as well. But to be determined, that, that certainly is something that we will be 
taking a close look at, but um, we aren't quite there yet. Appreciate that, Mike. And um, for those who have the chat visible, uh, looks like we were able to provide a response to the earlier question about the timeline for the rush line BRT construction. Um, I'll read that out for anyone that may not be able to see that chat. Based on the project's current timeline, it is anticipated that construction of the rush line BRT will begin in 2024 and the rush line BRT will open in 2026. And Mike, we got a follow-up question to those tree impacts um, asking if there is a mandate to replace trees that are removed with similar trees. Right. Um, I'll, I'll give a quick answer to it. Maybe uh, one of the agency folks can maybe clarify, but um, certainly the project will uh, respond to any local uh, local or county ordinance in terms of uh, tree replacement. Uh, we would are held to the same standards that a, a private project would be held to in terms of uh, adhering to any sort of tree removal ordinance uh, that's in place. At this time, I off the top of my head, I can't tell you um, if there uh, are any that would affect this project. Again, we haven't yet got to the point where we're quantifying that, um, but we would uh, have to adhere to those those standards as they would be imposed by the, the county or, or other agencies. Appreciate the question there. And appreciate everyone's participation this evening. Thank you for your questions and comments. Um, Another question regarding how many bridges on the total project will be constructed? Mike, do you want to take a stab at that? Um, again, it's something we're not quite uh, to the point of being able to, to really uh, affirmatively answer that question. We are looking at grade separated crossing uh, of Highway 96 as a possibility. Um, and there is a bridge, um, one bridge along uh, Bald Eagle Boulevard, and there is one, I don't know that I would call it a bridge, but a, a larger culvert along Hugo Road that would need to be addressed. Um, you know, so potentially up to, uh, up to two, uh, but I think our intent would be to try and make use of the existing bridge along Bald Eagle Boulevard and, uh, and the potential that there's a grade separated crossing at Highway 96. Once again, really appreciate that question and response as well. Well, the conversation continued just a little bit, which is great. That is what we're hoping to um, have with this virtual meeting. Scott, I think you did a, a great job kind of providing a, a thank you and some parting words. As we look to wrap up the meeting, I don't know if you wanna reiterate anything. Otherwise, um, I will on behalf of Project Partners, thank you once again for, for sharing. Um, similarly, this is a question kind of about process received here, just, um, Happy to continue to respond to these questions as they come in, but um, asking about will the, um, the pre-design or this project go before the White Bear Council? And I would um, maybe ask for a clarification there if that is the, the city of White Bear Lake Council, um, the township or others. So please feel free to provide a little bit of clarification if, if you would. Sure, so this is looking to understand if, if there is a presentation to the township and the city of White Bear Lake and a, a timeline for that. Mike, do you wanna to respond to that or should we pass that over to Ramsey County for a response? Sorry. Maybe Scott might be able to better answer that sure. question at this time. 
Hi everyone, Scott Yonke again, Ramsey County Parks. Uh, great questions. So um, again, this project is is very early and we're in the infancy stages of this. Uh, you know, the, the outcome of this project, we're only gonna be at the 20% design level. So I don't know if we will be at a, a good time frame for going to either the, the, the White Bear, um, White Bear Township Town Board or the White Bear Lake City Council. Um, but uh, I, um, ultimately, uh, our main goal is to uh, get to a point, provide enough information out as far as uh, design scenarios. Um, so at this point, it's, I don't know if I can really answer that question, being that it's so early in the project. I would assume that we would go through any city process that is required um, as, as the project goes along. Um, that said, we're gonna try present as many of these design scenarios. And, and ultimately, if, if the process leads us to go to either the, the, the White Bear Lake Council or the town board, we would, we would follow that process. Scott, well, um, you're responding to that. I think there was a, an additional question that came in about next steps after this 20% design, if, if the county will be hiring a consulting firm to proceed with the project or how, how the project will work moving forward. Uh, great question. So uh, that's, that's kind of a tough question to, to answer right now, but um, you know, ultimately we'll, we'll be at a 20% design uh, once this project is done. And then we'd be looking at trying to secure other funding opportunities for that, not knowing when that will be at this time. I don't know if I can give a, a, a great answer to that. We'd ultimately would need to have a, a consultant uh, help us prepare that, that work. Uh, so at this time, um, I couldn't tell you who that would be at, 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 at this point being that we don't have any funding uh, for that next portion. Appreciate your, your thoughts there on a look ahead for the project. Again, we'll just pause here to make sure that we've responded to all the questions um, that those in attendance would like to ask. Do appreciate the active participation this evening. Here's a question um, asking the position of the Bicycle Alliance on the design. I um, Maybe I'll turn it over to the county um, to see. I think that would probably be a question best directed to the Alliance, but Scott, I don't know if you wanna um, provide a little bit more of a response from your perspective. Um, great question. Uh, as, as far as, uh, as, far as I, again, I think we're very early in the project. So I think it gives us a chance to, to uh, begin more discussions with the, with the Bicycle Alliance on, on design scenarios or design outcomes for this. So I think um, as the community engagement goes along, there is gonna be some additional focus groups and opportunities for, uh, later on in the community engagement phases. So that would be a good opportunity to really um, um, talk further with uh, the Bicycle Alliance regarding uh, design outcomes. Excellent, appreciate that. Um, with us coming up on the six o'clock hour, I will look to, to wrap up this evening's meeting. Um, as you can see, uh, shown on the screen here for a while has been the contact information and the project website. We would encourage all of you who are able to join us this evening to stay involved in the project, to help us spread the word by sharing with friends, neighbors, coworkers, or others who you know who may be interested. Um, on the project website is an ability to provide a comment and respond um, if there are pieces and then look forward to um, providing a recording of both of this, these meetings on the website in the coming days. So please continue to stay involved. And with that, we will look to um, bring a close to this evening's meeting. Once again, thank you for joining us and have a good afternoon. Enjoy, um, as you can see, the sun has started to hit me here through the screen. Enjoy a pleasant evening.